understand that uh, the environment in Azania is not conducive for the movement at Lakwash because the people who are in the authorities are not in line in tune with our heartbeat because our heartbeat is about black power. You know, we want to reclaim our power as African people. So the environment in Azania is not conducive for us. But you understand the terrain that we are operating in. Because the foreigners of Blackwash movement, Bandu Bigo was killed by white machinery. Mangsoso Buka was killed. Many African leaders who were fighting for the total liberation of Africa in Azania were killed. So we understand that we represent a threat to the interest of white supremacy. At the same time, we represent a threat to the interest of neo-colonialists in Azania, because to us, ANC, you know, are operating as, as agents of white supremacy. People who are saving and protecting the interests of the white man, Anglo-American people who exploit the resources of Africa. Mm -hmm. So we understand, you know, the terrain, but uh, we are looking forward with confidence that we will manage to find ways and means on how to survive as revolutionaries, you know, coming up with strategies and tactics which works for us, you know, against our enemies. But our aim is to destroy, you know, white supremacy and regain our power, our land, our identity, our culture. How do you then connect with Zimbabwe here? Um, we've just come out of an election. Um, what are you here for then? Well, Zimbabwe to us has been um, very, very important from the first day that this movement was formed we have been planning a trip to come to Zimbabwe, and that was five years ago. Um, for us, Zimbabwe symbolizes what Haiti symbolized back then. You know, that country that said we will stand up against everything else and we'll fight no matter what, for what is right. So for us, we resonated and we connected spiritually even with Zimbabwe. And we've read the history of Zimbabwe. We know about the Chimurenga. We know about the gains. We also know about the losses. And we appreciate the sacrifice. So we look at Zimbabweans as the people who um, are guiding us. Because the steps that Zimbabwe has taken are the very steps that we are prepared to take, both as individuals and as an organization. So coming here to us meant to solidify, to even give ourselves a better understanding of what this um, country is because we know it's a treasure um, but to also come in and meet the people and sit with you here and talk and understand these issues so for us Blackwash when we when it was announced that the election would actually be on the 31st of July that's when we said look we need to be in Zimbabwe in fact we wanted to be here for the whole month we wanted to start um, when the campaigning season started it was I believe the first week of July we wanted to be here but we had little hurdles here and there, hence we arrived, I think, in the final week. But we were able to be so enriched in terms of learning from one another and dispelling, you know, this was another drive. People in South Africa are given a misconception, misconstrued ideas of what Zimbabwe is. In fact, Zimbabwe is used like a little ho ho to scare anyone who's rising up to demand about the land. If you say, we want our land back, we want this, even blackwash, when people interact with us, they say, you guys, you are talking dangerous um, things here. You know, you, do you want us to end up like Zimbabwe? And we're confident to say, yes, we want you to end up like Zimbabwe. Because Zimbabweans have their land. But to them, it means Zimbabwe, it, it's a complete, you know, it's a country that is demobilized, um, economically, it's, de it's, it's, it's fragmenting and all of those things. They do not understand what the core or, or the heart of Zimbabwe is all about. Oh